G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Springfield. It has been a few weeks and it is so good to be back. I do hope you're all well and have had a good Christmas break. Uh, if you are having some holidays, hope it's all been good for you all. Uh, we are back in Springfield to do some very much needed rail infrastructure. Something that I've been putting off for quite a while and the city has just been suffering because of it. So because we don't have very much rail infrastructure, we just see very little amounts of passengers coming via the train service. Uh, we do have a makeshift train station down here that is just like not great. <laughs> I'm going to replace it in today's episode. Um, but I also would like to start connecting up some of the more uh, cities and towns around Springfield. Uh, I also want to get like a train station around the airport and maybe one at Shelbyville. We've got Ogdenville out this way. We have disconnected train lines, just a whole absolute mess. So it would be good to get all that connected up. Um, but first things first, let's just deal with this mess down here because this is meant to be my train station for the whole city. And it's just, I mean, it's not great. I've just been placing things down here and hoping that nobody else would notice. But it's time to change this because we do have a custom asset that we can replace all this with. And I'm thinking it should look a little bit like this. Yeah, this is a much better looking asset. So this is a custom building by Mark and Room Mick. So shout out to those guys. This is pretty, um, pretty fantastic. Uh, this is obviously the model from the TV show. So it's really nice to actually see that um, as part of my version too. Um, there are some things that I'm going to change. There's actually some things that I've already changed up. Um, so far, you can already see that I've added in this concrete um, underneath area here. Can't really call it a platform because the platform will actually sit along here. But yeah, it's like this little park area that I'll put some benches and stuff. Uh, I also put it in this this parking area, and I've got this entrance here. But what I'm planning on doing, and I've got a little bit of free will because I haven't really seen any other references from the train station, so I'm pretty clear. Uh, but what I'm planning on doing is I'm going to put like a park here, park here. Probably just some residential, some houses and stuff like that around there. Uh, it's pretty, um, it's a pretty good location too. We've got the monorail station here, and we've also got the town center. Uh, I've just put up a connection, so just to see if it works. So I've got a connection from here to the airport, so that's why we're seeing some trains coming through. Uh, but yeah, that's our next step is to actually figure out how that's going to look. But it's very nice to see people actually using this service. So as you can tell, we do need to add in a custom platform underneath here and I'll put in the detail work, but I'll do that in the time lapse. Something else that I've done, but you might not have noticed is this train station is actually too far away from this road. So when I dragged it out this way, it started to complain that I was too far away from a road connection. And I was like, well, how am I going to get a road out this way without disrupting this whole, this whole thing that I've got going on here. Uh, and what I've done is I've actually got an invisible road. One of these guys, and it's a one way road. And I've disabled cars from driving around because I don't really want to see cars driving along here. But basically it goes from here and it just goes like this. You can actually see people using that road, which is, I'm actually totally fine with. Uh, I've also just hidden a little bit of the ugliness underneath some surface like that. And I've just used that road as the entrance for the parking, which I thought worked out pretty well. And I'm not too worried about people crossing like this because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put some of these little crosswalks over this train line so that people actually can walk along these, these, um, I'm just going to see you later. <laughs> I'm actually going to see people walking along those pathways. So I think that'd be a nice little touch. It's nice to see them using that one too. All right, so detail work, that's to come. We're gonna do that in the time-lapse. Um, and something else I need to do in the time-lapse as well is I, two things. First of all, I have to figure out what are we gonna do with the connection over here? We're we gonna connect it like this or we're gonna make some sort of connection going through here. I've got an idea of potential connection through here, but I don't know, we might do that in the time-lapse. And let's make a decision about the stops that we end up having. I'm thinking that it'd be quite cool to see a stop in the main center of Springfield, but then another stop down at Crackton, 
and potentially the line then going out this way or a stop at Crackton, which might be around here, and then it crosses the bridge over to Squidport. But I think we definitely have a stop at Squidport, which might go around here. We have one at the uh, International Airport for sure. Then I think we do a left turn. We go into Shelbyville. I don't know about Bloodbath Gulch, maybe. Definitely one at Springfield Badlands. And then one at Higdon. And then I think that's about it. Like, it's just a, there's a few stops that it needs to make, but that way we're actually going to start seeing a little bit more connectedness, and it should be pretty fun to see those trains actually finally getting around our city. So yeah, a few things to do in the time lapse. Let's start with some detail work. So first things first, I do want to give another shout out to Room Mick and Mark, who created this train station asset. It is a really cool model, it's very unique, and I think it'd fit in with not just Springfield related or Simpsons related uh, projects, so feel free to grab it from the Steam Workshop if you are interested in using it. And another shout out to Die Hard Hunter, who's already done a lot of work for this project, but he has very kindly made some new skins for some of the trucks that he has created um, previously, uh, and you saw them driving around in the opening cinematics. They are some duff. Uh, lorries which just look great now <laughs> driving around Springfield you can also grab them from the Steam Workshop if you are uh, interested in grabbing them too um, what we are up to right now is I wanted to work on this platform because I just felt like the platform just wasn't long enough uh, I'm trying to keep it pretty similar to the types of train stations you typically find around America Quite a lot of people have been telling me that the train infrastructure, the rail infrastructure in America is really just not great. I think it used to be like a really great network, but these days it's it's really lacking. Um, that's pretty similar to Australia. We have a pretty bad train network as well. Uh, so I did want to try and create some sort of station that was reminiscent of the type of train station you typically find around America. but. Uh, you will see some differences in my version because I did want to just sort of build a bit more of a generic looking one So for instance the type of platform that I was using previously I think is a bit more of a typical Platform that you usually find in America, but uh, I've ended up going with this different version um, Mostly because I think the texture is just a little bit better if you uh, look closely you can see some really nice tiles and I also think the color just sort of fits in with this whole uh, rest of the train station too because I did want it to sort of feel a little bit more old it is definitely an older style train station uh, I wasn't really sure how similar this is to stations you typically find in America it is definitely a much older station than I would have um, probably placed down if I was building a city quite like the one that I'm building uh, I would have also liked to have had a couple more lines that were, you know, potentially bypassing this station, but trying to stay as true as possible to any references that I can find, there only really seems to be two lines, so unfortunately just had to keep it that way. Uh, but yeah, in terms of taking references, there's like two episodes that I know of, one of which is an older episode and I've actually seen, and that's of course the one where Skinner turns out to be an imposter and then the real Skinner comes back, but then the people of Springfield decide, nah, we're gonna send him back. And then this other episode probably gives me the most amount of references that I can take ideas from, but there's not a huge amount that goes on around here. Uh, probably getting more ideas from the Simpsons Tapped Out game, which is proving to be one of the most useful ways of getting ideas of how a lot of these places look. So that's generally my ideas that I am putting into this. Uh, trying to stay as true as possible, but then at the same time, gives me a little bit of freedom to then create my own version. A couple of things I know I have to include, this brown fence that surrounds the station and then there are quite a lot of trees around here too, so that's a really nice easy detail that I can add in. And um, on top of that brown fence, I decided to add some extra fencing just around the platform of the station. I know that this is not very typical in a lot of American stations. Uh, a lot of people are telling me that these are quite open there's not a lot of fencing around a lot of these train lines. So I found that quite surprising because in Australia we have quite a lot of fences around uh, train lines. So yeah, I just did that anyway. <laughs> and I was gonna delete it because I was like, uh, people have told me that there aren't a lot of fences around these lines, but decided to keep it because it just adds in a little bit more detail. It just makes these really nice 
um, barriers between different areas and I just think it looks nice like that. So I decided to keep that in um, instead. Um, and I've just put a couple of shops around here, figured there's going to be a fair amount of people visiting the station or using the station, so we probably should give them some commercial areas to use. Uh, and on that, I mean, can you see all the people walking around here? It's just so bustling, it's crazy. Uh, and I also wanted to include a few parks because I knew that this would be an area that needed a little bit more green space. thought this would be one of the better places for a bit more um, parkland. And I just want to do a couple of these custom uh, little pathways, which I thought were really nice, especially when you see all these people walking around and a lot of which are actually making transfers to other areas within Springfield. So um, I'm finding that a lot of people are visiting Springfield from the via the train station and then they are jumping on the monorail or they're going to be catching a bus, which I end up putting in the infrastructure for a little bit later on. And then um, uh, quite a lot of people are also going to the town centre because there are quite a lot of parks around there. There are some unique buildings. So a lot of these people are actually tourists and they're actually coming to the city to um, wander around and visit, which is pretty fun. And it was at around this point where I was just watching the masses running around this station, visiting different places around Springfield, that I noticed that there were a lot of people using this one path, using this one road that I had dragged to uh, basically connect up this station to the road. Um, and I still really loved the driveways going up to the car park, but I really hated seeing so many people actually just walking across the car park like that. Um, so I decided, okay, maybe I could just have it in a visible road or visible path that directed people in a different area. Um, unfortunately, they were still using this one road. So my workaround for that is I just created a bit more of a longer route for that road. And that way people opted for this pathway instead because it's actually a quicker access. So just a really simple way of influencing the way that people take paths in the game. And I think it just changed a lot. And I was really pleased to see that uh, people weren't walking across that, that, uh, that car park anymore. So that was just one little technique that I did. So I decided to give a little bit more infrastructure for pedestrians, seeing that there are so many people actually walking around this place. Uh, I dragged a couple more pathways and just made some more concreted areas so people can walk around. But I just really loved watching these people walking around the station. It was just so satisfying to see. And now that we don't have people just taking the short route and going across the car park, I thought I'd probably should put some fencing around here just to add a little bit more detail. Uh, just use these little, uh, they're called bollards, but that's really just a chain link fence. And I just had a couple of areas within the fence where I opened it up for pedestrians so that they can take those entrances from the car park too. Um, and I end up placing down some bollards where they can um, go through, but um, the actual cars cannot. And then I thought, because we do have so many people coming into this station, needed a little bit more infrastructure to get people around. And I thought that this would probably be a good spot for some sort of bus infrastructure. Uh, I was going to put one of the bigger transport hubs here, but there just wasn't enough space. And I figured we probably didn't really need anything that big. Um, rather than uh, doing something like that, we could just instead put this one road that is dedicated to bus um, drop off and pick up. Uh, just put two stops here. Maybe I'll put a couple more on the other side. Um, it's pretty simple. It's just a one way road and I end up stopping other cars from coming along here because people are just still using it. So um, yeah, just made it dedicated for buses. I was thinking about using one of the red roads, uh, like a bus road, but I don't know, I sort of thought that maybe they wouldn't have that in the 90s. Uh, of course, they do have bus dedicated roads, but I don't, I feel like that the red color, you know the road, you know the road I'm talking about, those red colored roads, I feel like that's more of a 2000s thing, but let me know if that's not true because I'm really just speculating. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to keep it pretty simple. Just have um, a couple of pathways around here. Um, just place down some very simple bus shelters and some benches for people. And I figured for just a little bit of added realism, some fencing around the road so that you are diverting people to use the designated area for bus pickup. Otherwise, people will maybe still use this area for 
um, regular car pickup, but having this fence around here might actually stop people from doing that. So um, that's why I put the fence around here, plus it's a little bit safer. But I really love this little pathways. I'm really enjoying making these custom pathways where I'm just using these decals and some invisible fencing, so invisible pathways, and people are using them so nicely around the city, which I am really enjoying doing. Uh, something that I haven't really done in many of my other series is a bit more of a focus on these pathways, and you can actually see a lot of them within the downtown of um, Springfield. Now, this area here, I originally was thinking about making this some sort of like train depot or an area where I've just got um, the trains just sitting on the tracks waiting to be used. I ended up just thinking that that would be a little bit of a squished area for it. So I think we might need a little bit more space to do that, but I definitely want to do it um, somewhere within the city because we are using these really nice trains, this whole set that's by Astro. I don't know if you've seen many of their work, but they're so amazing. They're really great trains. They're w much more old school style um, trains. There's um, a whole bunch from the 70s and the 80s, um, even earlier. Uh, these ones are actually really similar to the ones that I can actually even see in a lot of the references from The Simpsons, so it's really nice that I can um, actually use them. But you know what, that's pretty much it for the detail work around here. Now it's time to start figuring out where the rest of the train line's going to go. And I've got an idea for this spot here. So we have this suburb, this is Bumtown. Mm -hmm. And we all know that there is a train line in Bumtown that divides Bumtown from the nicer areas of Springfield. Get out of Bumtown, you're no talent, bum! So I figured this mm -hmm. would probably be the best spot to then make the train line go from this side of the river to the other side because we definitely needed to include that and what better way than to uh, make that train line go between Bumtown and some of the nicer areas. There's actually also another area that's around here called Theatre District and I think that's going to be a little bit more of a swankier, nicer area of Springfield. So that actually worked out pretty well. And I already had this in mind, so I did actually leave a little bit of a gap so that we could drag a train line around here. Um, but we are definitely cutting it pretty close, um, pretty fine. There is not a huge amount of room around here. And it meant that I did have to do a little bit of reshuffling. And in particular, this cross section here where we've got this, um, we've got these three points, these three rail lines that um, I needed to make the connection between. And that was really tricky because at first I thought I could just make the connection um, at ground level and just have all these intersections. But then there was just too much business around here. I felt like they wouldn't have this many, uh, this many crossings, this many train crossings for such a busy part of the city and on so many different roads. I figured there would probably be a bit of a gap within the grid and there would only be the main lines or the main roads still connected up. So I tried just to include the best road to make access, but I ended up deleting that one too because I figured we didn't really need it. Like people can still get around the city um, by not using these roads. So I decided maybe we'll just get rid of that road too. So you'll see me delete it. Um, but even still, even at ground level, it didn't feel right. So what I ended up doing is I raised um, parts of the land around here up a little bit and I lowered the train line as well so that we could actually have this below ground area. And this took a little bit of time, a little bit of practice. Um, I wanted to make sure that there was enough clearance underneath um, this overpass. And I didn't really want like a huge difference between um, the rest of Springfield and this one area of the train line. I wanted it to be very, like very close, but still safe enough for trains to go under. Um, but from a distance, I didn't really want the change to be too noticeable because yeah, I just think that that would be just a little bit too jarring and too much of a big change. Uh, in terms of detail around here, I kept it so simple. I just made um, this foresty area and some rocks as well. And um, unfortunately, one of the things about lowering this area is that all this other detail that I put down here um, no longer is at ground level. So instead, because these are all props and they're just raised up anyway, I could actually just use some ploppable surface to basically hide that gap. And I thought that a bit of a concrete barrier, concrete retaining wall would actually look quite nice around here. Now, we are getting to the end of the episode, and I know you're wondering where all those connections are that I said that I was going to make at the end of this episode. 
I have done that. I recorded all that footage. I made connections with Crackton, Squidport, the airport, Shelbyville, Hickton, and just did all the train lines around there. But I decided to cut them from the episodes because it just wasn't that interesting footage. It's really just me dragging out lines and putting down train stations in areas that don't have anyone there. But it's all there, take my word for it. We'll have to build up those areas another day. But for next week's episode, I would like to work in the downtown and get a little bit more of a skyline happening because we're lacking of a skyline at this stage. So yeah, that's what we're gonna be doing in the next episode. I wanna give a special shout out to some of the newest patrons supporting me on Patreon. Nick Kasharp, Ginston Knight, Not Validated, Luis Martinez, Cyrus Hall, Sebastian Hasselberg, Terrible and the very appropriately named Max Power. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Very much appreciated, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!